Jackson is the leader of a New York Jets squad with both offensive weapons, both on the ground and through the air. For Dave Wanstead and the Chicago Bears, a challenge of stopping the Jets looms ahead. Are the Bears up to the task? It's the NFL on TNT next. We have come to East Rutherford, New Jersey for tonight's TNT Sunday Night Special. The Chicago Bears make their second appearance ever in the Meadowlands, meeting the New York Jets. The Bears and Jets tonight, right here on TNT. Hi again, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. The Bears were embarrassed at home last week, losing to the Vikings 42-14. to The worst loss in the brief head coaching career of Dave Wanstead. As they come into this game tonight, you sense an air of urgency, a critical game. In fact, the players called for a meeting on Thursday night. With me is Pat Hayden. And Pat, we have a change at quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Eric Kramer had a partially separated right shoulder. He can't start. Steve Walsh will get the nod. He was very impressive in the preseason. Well, he had a real good preseason. He's a very solid quarterback, Gary. And, you know, he started the NFL. You know you know what you have in Steve Walsh. And he is a pretty good player. The thing that uh, they like about him, he's very similar to Eric Kramer. So they had the same kind of plays. You don't have to change their offense for Steve Walsh. That's the good news. I mean, they don't have to change the plays the bad news is Gary those plays haven't worked too well the last couple of weeks and I, I think it, for him to be successful tonight they're really going to have to run the ball well well the Bears defense hasn't been very successful the last two games they've given up 72 points haven't been able to stop the run that's really baffled Wanstead yeah I, I think it goes beyond baffling uh, Wanstead I think it's really upset him and he said we've really got to make some plays on defense last year they were a pretty good defensive team and then pretty good as you see they ranked fourth entire NFL look what has happened this year they are last in rushing defense, only three sacks, two turnovers. If you can't stop the run, you're not going to win in the National Football League. Now, Dave said two guys in particular have to step up tonight. One is Trace Armstrong. He is now the leader of the defensive front. Wanstead said he's got to play a lot better. Dante Jones at middle linebacker. He comes back after an injury. He'll have to have a big game for them to play well tonight. Well, the New York Jets won their first two games, but they missed a major opportunity last week, losing to a hot Miami Dolphins team. New coach Pete Carroll said this. He says, how we respond tonight might really affect the rest of this season and where we're going to take this football team. He needs a much better performance from Boomer Esiason. He leads the NFL with seven interceptions. Yeah, and just goes to show you, this Jet team is not a dominant team that can, you know, win if they turn the ball over that much. And we were talking to Boomer Esiason yesterday. Did you see what, he, what he's done this season, the seven interception? He said, we're going to run the ball against this Chicago Bear defense because they have been very good stop on the run. But we're going to do it in a couple different ways. Yeah, we're going to run Johnny Johnson and Adrian Morrell and those kind of guys, but we're going to treat the passing game as run, too. A lot of short passes and use those as runs. The other thing I think to, to, to look for for the Jets tonight, Gary, is some mismatches physically with their wide receivers. Their starting four wide receivers go between 6'3 and 6'5. They're going to have a 5 to 8 inch differential between the defensive backs of the Bears. The Jets have been having trouble stopping the run themselves. They gave up 155 yards last week. Now, they signed Tony Casillas this week, the former Cowboy defensive tackle. That will help, but what really helps is return to middle linebacker by Marvin Jones. Yeah, Marvin Jones didn't play last week when they gave up 155 yards to the Miami Dolphins. They're going to get him at middle linebacker to start this evening, and that's going to make a big difference. Pete Carroll says we're just a lot better defense when Marvin Jones is in the game. Now, remember, the Bears were blown out the last two weeks. They want to keep this game close. They're going to try to run it. They're going to throw some short passes, and Marvin Jones is going to be the guy in charge of stopping those plays. Pete Carroll, in his first year, he turned 43 years of age on the 15th of this month. The last four years, a defensive coordinator for the Jets. One of four rookie head coaches, and he's changed the Jets' attitude. Has great people skills, and his enthusiasm is very contagious. His counterpart, Dave Wanstead, is in his second year. He is 42, coming off the worst loss of his career. He's making so many changes with this football team. He had 23 new players last year, 14 this season. He knows it's going to take three or four years to get where he wants to be, and he lives his life between the goalposts, his single-mindedness.
Well, the Bears coming off of that big setback last week. Dave Wanstead had these thoughts on the psyche of his football team in week number four. Early in the week, it was it was tough, and uh, I, I tried being as honest with them as I could. I mean, at this point in the season, as early it is, uh, you need to get this thing turned around and get it going. I think if it's if you got two or three of the games go in the season, you might try to to just kind of get through and, and rally up an effort the next week. But but we're too young a team, and it's too early in the season, and it's too early in this in this building process that we're doing here to to not cause a little bit of a crisis. And so he feels this is his first major crisis in just his second year as a head football coach. The Jets have won the toss. They will receive. Kevin Butler will be kicking off, and that's a change for the Bears. They've had Chris Gardaki kicking off, but Gardaki has struggled with his punting, so they've taken that responsibility away from him, and Butler will kick off. The two guys deep for the Jets, Adrian Morrell and Richie Anderson. And if you're wondering about these uniforms, they are vintage 1925-26 for the Chicago Bears. The Jets, on the other hand, wearing their uniforms in 1-68 in en route to that Super Bowl championship in Super Bowl III. It's going to be Morrell inside the five. Got a hole to the 25, to the 33 yard line. And so the Jets get a good starting position. Mark Carrier was there to make the stop. And Boomer Esiason. Well, they need more boom from Boomer tonight. Did not play well last week, suffering those four interceptions. Since being acquired last year by trade, he has brought tremendous leadership to this team. He has a very powerful personality, and he may be the greatest play-action faker that's ever played in the NFL. And Gary, Danell Wolford, who's the best defensive player for the Bears, said, hey, the start of this game, the first game play, is really important for us. We want to start on the right foot. From the 33, a Sison on first down, dumps it off to Adrian Morrell. Morrell out to the 40. And surprisingly, he's in there instead of Johnny Johnson. Morrell, they want to get his outside speed, and eventually Dante Jones was over there to make the stop. So let's take a look now at the rest of the defensive core for these New York Jets who come in here two and one. We mentioned Johnny Johnson. He is their go-to guy. Baxter, who's been slowed with a turf toe, missing the first two games. And up front, a very solid offensive line. They are enormous on that right side. Mala Mala and White are listed at 315 each, and that's probably not even close. Second down and a long two. Esiason getting some rush. Gets it off to Johnny Johnson. He's got the first down. Out to the 48-yard line. Dante Jones again making the stop for the Chicago Bears. Defensively, the Bears need to get somebody to make some plays up front. A very young defensive line. Pat mentioned Trace Armstrong has to provide some leadership there. Fontenot only his second start. Dante Jones returning a huge difference. He's been slowed with some injury problems. Wolford is one of the best cornerbacks in the league, and Gale and Carrier have been to the Pro Bowl. Johnson and Johnson gets to the Chicago end of the field of the 49 a game of a couple of yards on the play and Ron Cox very good against the run there to make the stock Cox starting however we'll see Vincent Smith through the course of the game as they'll share that outside linebacking spot now Dave wants to, was talking all week about hey our defense has to make plays and Gary that that's this not interceptions and turnovers that's getting off of blocks you know, it's swiping a, a guy, it's chasing down from the backside. It's not just the big plays, it's the every down plays. They need more effort on every single play defensively. Second and eight for the Jets. Esiason, far side, down in the air, and it's dropped. For a Boy. moment, it looked like Rob Moore had a completion, but Danelle Wolford reached up and was able to bat it away from Rob Moore and keep that from being completed to the 25-yard line. You know, we, we talked about the physical matchups. Rob Moore goes 6'3", Wolford's 5'9", but when you play like this, you have catch-up speed. As soon as he turns, puts his hands up, Wolford just knocks it and fights it out of his hands. That's a strong play by Danelle Wolford. That's so the one thing he can do, Pat. He has that vertical leap, that yeah. ability to get up against guys like
like more. Uh, in that, and as soon as you see the wide receiver go up, you go up and try to swipe it away. That, that was a very strong play. Third and eight. Siason with excellent protection to Johnny Johnson. And Johnson, who led him in rushing and receiving last year as a first down catch to the 40. Dante Jones there to make the stop. This is a no-nonsense guy, Johnny Johnson, a slasher, a very tough football player. And, and right now he's got three receptions. Remember Boomer was talking to us yesterday about using the passing game as kind of runs. I mean, they're running that West Coast offense. It seems like everybody is. You dump it to a guy that's short of the markers there in that time. Let him break some tackles and keep the chains moving. And they move the chains to the 40. The Siason to Johnson, and he is straightened up. Albert Fontenot, big Al, as they call him, only his second start and as many weeks, and they feel this guy with his work ethic is going to get better and better each week. And this is what Juan Stodd wants. He, Dave wants guys fighting off blocks. You're going to see him just get tied up here, but he fights off and he doesn't stay blocked. I mean, it's one thing to get blocked. It's completely another thing to fight off that block, and then you make the tackle on Johnny Johnson. Mike no, a second-year man from Baylor. Fourth-round draft pick a year ago. A loss of the yard, second and 11. Morrell goes in motion to Siason with time again over the middle. The receiver clears, and running with the football is a tight end, Johnny Mitchell. It's fumbled, it's loose. The Bears may have it. No, the Jets have recovered to the 12-yard line. Yeah, Rob, Rob Moore made the recovery there. I tell you, what the Jets do when they've been hot this year, when they've won their two games, they've spread it around. Now they've thrown three balls to Johnny Johnson. Then they come back to their tight end, Johnny Mitchell, who's very strong after the catch. But there's another Bear making a play, forcing the fumble. But it was a hustling Rob Moore who made the recovery. So we've seen at least the Bears, although they're in some trouble right now in scoring defense, they at least a couple guys have made some plays, Gary. Heads up play by Moore. A science in four or five now. Six as he hits more and more makes the rolling catch. The Bears feel that he trapped it, but the officials thinking otherwise. They're going to give him the completion to the five. It was Carrier and Wolford defending on the play. Well, you know, he's got a cast on his left hand, Rob Moore, right there in the middle of your screen. And when he's on the left, that left is a lead hand. I mean, he's better off being the right wide receiver. See if it's a trap. See, the, the, the cast is bothering him there. That is indeed a trap. That is yep. not a, uh, should not have been a catch. Instead, it's first and goal at the five. Size and sprint on hand up to Johnson. Touchdown, Jets. Go. Johnny Johnson, a five-yard touchdown run as a Siason with the surgeon-like precision moved this football very efficiently on this drive. And Nine got a, plays, 67 yards. They got a break on the fumble recovery, a hustling play by Rob Moore, but for the Bears, Gary, a team that's struggling with its confidence, the worst start you can think about. Nick Lowry to attempt the point after, out of the hold of Brian Hansen. Lowry makes it 7 to nothing. The New York Jets. The center, Jim Sweeney, number 53 for the Jets, just dominates Fontenot, number 96, just pushes him out. A good read by Johnny Johnson. He gets those shoulders squared. You're not going to stop him in front of the end zone. Roger Duffy's going to peel off this linebacker, and then Johnny Johnson just hugs that block. A very patient run by Johnny Johnson. It really kind of goes into the end zone very, very easily. But, you know, this is what the Bears have not been able to do all season is stop the run. They couldn't do it there on a goal line situation. They're giving up almost 150 yards a game. There's a the drive capped by J.J.'s five-yard touchdown run. Nate Lewis, the new kickoff return man for the Bears, replacing Curtis Conway, who fumbled last week. And Nick Lowry to kick it off. Lewis 
comes up with it. 25 to the 30. They try to tackle the ball, and he hangs on and brings it out to the 32-yard line. So Steve Walsh, who started one game last year for the Saints, the final game of the season, his first start this season, very bright, exudes confidence. He's very similar physically to Eric Kramer, maybe a little more mobile, and Wanstead last night called him a winner. And he looks at this tonight as a great opportunity. Well, again, we talked about this is a team, the Bears, in real, who really is a team, a win for their confidence. And it starts, I think, Gary, with this first offensive ser uh, series. From the 31, first down. Hodge goes in motion. Waltz comes out throwing. He makes the completion, and he's got the first down. And that's got to be very encouraging to Dave Wanstead as Curtis Conway made the catch, an 18-yard completion. And one thing they didn't want to do was go three and out. Yeah, that, that's a big play, even though they still trail in this game. But their opening play picks up a first down because they have been really bad. You see what's happened the first three weeks in the uh, three and outs. You see where the Jets and the Bears are. But the Bears were saying to us, we can't have a three and out in our first offensive series. Needed a first down, and they got it. Harold Hodge goes in motion. Lewis Tillman, and he's thrown for a loss. Great penetration. That was a good effort that time by Donald Evans. Jeff Lagerman was also there. Let's look now at the rest of this Bears offense. It needs that confidence booster of a moment ago. Tillman has played well, just hasn't carried the ball that much. Conway has been inconsistent. Gedney has a couple of touchdown catches. The offensive line, much different than a year ago. They signed Andy Heck from the Seattle Seahawks. Bortz has been there since the 80s. He's the one stable guy up front all these years for Chicago. scramble around that they're going to blow the play dead. They say he was down. He was tackled. Good pressure that time from Jeff Lagerman as Dale Hammer on top of the scene. Gary, you can tell when the Jet defense is playing well because Lagerman is usually in the backfield. I mean, that's two straight plays. Jeff Lagerman, number 56, he just did a little ole to the blocker there and then knocked the quarterback down, Steve Walsh. But Lagerman has made some real penetration the last two plays. Evans also there. The old lay is at the lookout. Yeah, it's a little, no, it's the old lookout. Here it comes. Third and 20. Tom Waddle in motion. Waltz has to get rid of it. A screen. It's complete to Robert Green. A nickelback. And Green back to the midfield stripe before... The tackle is made by Marvin Jones, number 54, the guy they missed so sorely a week ago because of ankle problems. Gary, yeah, I want to tell you, Jeff Lagerman, so far three plays in a row. He's on Andy Heck, number 64 for the Bears, gets off very quickly. I mean, he's beaten the back. That time he beats Andy Heck. I tell you, that, that happens every series. Steve Walsh is not going to survive the end of this game. They have given up eight sacks coming into this game, three last week. Chris Gardaki gets it very high. Fair catch is called for by Clifford Hicks. It then hits a bear, and it'll be downed inside the 20-yard line. I don't think any of the Jets touch the ball. It's Chicago that touched it, and so New York will have it, and with a 7 to nothing lead. That's a 32-yard punt. Gardaki's been struggling with his punting, but he does have great hang time when he hits it well, and he got that one way up in the air. So Chris Gardaki, who will solely punt and then hold on the placements. And we're going to have an explanation here. All will be awarded to the Jets for illegal touching, illegal touching timeout. <laughs> An illegal touching never, timeout. Never That's not illegal easy to touch. say. Never illegal touch. Not allowed. We'll be back. <laughs> Seven to nothing, New York. Line and Dave Wanstead, who of course was a brilliant defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys, winning a Super Bowl ring there, exhorting his troops. That was after they gave up that first touchdown. From the 19. Brad Baxter, the big burly fullback. Out to the 22-yard line. They have one game still in progress out at Husky Stadium. The Seahawks leading the Steelers 20 to 6. How about San Diego? They moved to 4-0 today. Stan Humphreys coming after getting hurt, comes back and that was leads a to the scary field moment goal. Yeah. for Bobby Ross. Second and six now for the Jets. Sison's got the 
time. And Johnny Mitchell, the intended receiver, he and Moore are in the same vicinity. And I think they were a little confused there and did not help each other on that particular play. No, well, but I'll tell you one thing is Boomer Esaias and sure had plenty of time. I mean, one of the things, you know, the, the Bear defense have not created many turnovers. They don't have many sacks, only three sacks in three games. And if your quarterback has that much time to throw, and he really hasn't been rushed much thus far tonight, I mean, your, your quarterback has a chance to have a big evening. They bring their nickel package in. John Theory, their top draft pick, comes in at defensive end. Spellman moves inside. Maurice Douglas and John Mangum have come into the secondary. Third and six. Being flushed out of screen. Johnson, good reaction for the Bears, and Theory, who just checked into the game out of Alcorn State. Their first-round draft pick read that one very well. well. You know, Johnny Johnson cut inside on that play, Gary. It looks like it would set up to go outside. He had a couple of blockers out in the left flat, but he, he turned it back inside right into the Bear defenders, and now they're going to punt it. And so the Bears hold, and that will bring in their punter, Brian Hansen. Last week, Hansen just kicked the tar out of the ball. He averaged 50.5 on four punts. It's the air. Oh, the air. Oh, those They're tar. filled with air. Helium, or I don't know. Hansen ready now to punt inside the 10. Waddle is back for the Bears. Waddle's calling for the fair catch, and he'll make it at the 42-yard line. Chicago will have the football trailing 7 to nothing. A 36-yard punt that time by Hansen. We'll be back to the Meadowlands in just a moment. And Tillman across the 45 and then shoved back as he reaches the 46. Boy, what football we had on the fourth week of the NFL season. And the Falcons, after losing to Kansas City on our era last Sunday night, picking up a win. I just cannot believe the Chiefs were shut out today. Never would have guessed that. And then the Packers. Looks like Brett Favre has returned in fine style. Barry Sanders with another, I should say, Bledsoe with another big game. 251 yards. Air Parcells is just starting to call. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Yep. And off again to Tillman. And Tillman this time got a yard. The Seahawks in the fourth quarter out in Husky Stadium. With a lead there, we mentioned the Chargers going to 4-0. They've won in Seattle, they've won in Denver, and now won in the Coliseum, which is pretty impressive. Oilers picking up a victory, and the Vikings, what a shootout they had today. An important third down here for the Bears, Gary. Again, they get good field position. They have to keep this game close because they're not a great come-from-behind team. Third. Important third down for them. Third down and three, Pat. Excuse me. He ran into a real jam in the middle of that line. Marvin Washington was one of those, number 97, who stuffed that play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Tillman had no chance trying to run off the right side behind Jay Lewenberg and James Williams. You know, running backs have to be, you know, be patient, but so do middle linebackers, Gary. And Marvin Jones there for the Jets was very, very patient stuffing that run. Just crossed the 50. They needed to get closer to the 48-yard line, so it's a fourth down coming up. Marvin Jones not playing last week due to the fact he has the ankle problem. We talked about being patient. He's number 54. And a lot of middle linebackers who are anxious will overrun a play like that. But he hung in there, he hung in there, he read it properly, and then he stuffs him. Ardaki to punt the football. Instead, and running straight ahead with the football, the Bears. Great call. Yes, it was on a fourth down and a yard to go. That is Bob Christian, number 44, who took the snap. He was the up back, and he got the first down. And when you're not going well, you got to make some things happen. And Chicago did just that. You're right. I mean, you're you're struggling offensively and defensively. Your special teams have to do something. Christian's the up back. You know, perfect situation to call it when you're in the middle of the field. It's third and about two. Danny Abramowitz, the uh, special teams coach. Special teams makes a big play for the Bears. They needed some of those. And they're at the 45 now of New York. Waltz going deep. He's got a man wide open. It's Curtis Conway, but he can't catch up to it. There's the speed that they want, and they want Curtis Conway to start making some big plays. Brian Washington defending on the play. That, that, that's a missed opportunity, though, Gary. I mean, you only have, you only get a few of these during the course of a season. We have a legitimate shot at a big play and a home run. I mean, he had him, 
he just overthrew him. And that should have been a touchdown for the Bears. Walsh, his first incomplete pass, he's two of three now for 28 yards. One thing that Wanstead's tried to do, Pat, is upgrade the speed, and Conway represents a lot of that. He had yeah, the football. I, thought I think he had everybody it. did. Instead, Conway, what concentration, was able to hang in there and make the catch. Yeah, you know, we, we've talked about making plays, even though this is only a five five yard gain, it was still a heck of a concentration to play by Conway. The ball is off very quickly. This is what the Bears will do. He kind of slipped. It looked like his left foot slipped, and uh, Glenn thought he was off to the races, but it was a left foot uh, slip of Steve Walsh, so he couldn't get a lot on it. Aaron Glenn, a rookie. You know, the thing about being a rookie, you're always going to be tested. The Bears tested him there. He almost picked it off and scored. Almost like sleight of hand. It wasn't yeah. there. Taking the action there. Going off the field very slowly. Defensive end Marvin Washington for the Jets. Alfred Oglesby will replace him. Our aerial shots tonight provided by the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One. The Blimp travels over 60,000 miles a year to cover sporting events and television specials across the United States. And glad to have him here with the aerial view. What a setting here at the Meadowlands. We didn't think we were going to be able to use him today. It had been cloudy, overcast, but it cleared in time to get Snoopy One around here. I'll tell you, the kickers and punters are happy for this evening, too, Gary. There's not any wind out there tonight. Wait till later. Later in the year. Third down now, four. Praise 91 made contact. It's a great time to change up your count on a third and four. You get a free first down. You, know, you don't waste those on first down or second down. You wait till you're driving. And a third and four, you change up the count, pick up an easy first down. That's that's a heads-up play by Steve Walsh. I tell you, the Bears are doing anything they can right now to keep a drive First going. Win. Number 91 of the defense, five yards, first down. Remember they went on the fake punt? Now the change in cadence by Walsh gives them another first down by penalty. And they're going to have the ball at the 34. As now coming to the ball game is Jeff Graham at wide receiver. Marv Cook also checking in a tight end for Chicago. Double tight end as Getney comes in. Here's where you'd really like your offensive lineman, Gary, to, to get in rhythm, get it going, run the football, use some time, get, get the ball in the end zone, run it into the end zone. Play action by Waltz. Waltz is looking to the end zone. Instead, dumps it to Marv Cook, the former New England Patriot, who had three years where he caught more than 50 balls. And Cook making that catch, and it'll bring up a second down for the Jets. Good pressure coming up the middle. It looked like Lagerman again. Lagerman, as you mentioned, has just been everywhere. Yeah, again, you can always tell when they're playing well. He's in the backfield. Jeff Lagerman. Number 56 right there. And what he does, he's got four different pass rushes. That time he just kind of sh uh, shook James Williams loose and went to the inside. He was upfield before, then kind of came inside on him and picked up a second sack. Third down now. Virtually 10 yards to go. Split wide, a little screen, complete to Hodge. Merrill Hodge to the 25, diving, he's got the first down. Ronnie Lott, who still runs around and smacks people like he's a rookie. I mean, he just <laughs> continues to hit you. An 11-yard pickup on the play, first down Chicago. I'll tell you, one way to slow down a rush, and the Jets been putting some pressure on Steve Walsh, is to run some screens. Now, Hodge is something that the Bears didn't have last year, so a real receiving threat out of the backfield. With that, with Hodge, you have that, and he should catch four, five, six passes like that and can really keep it going. The Bears trailing seven to nothing, have a first down. Hodge and his cook hand off to Tillman. That play was not right. Right. getting off well at all as Waltz and Tillman almost collided in the exchange. Tillman trying to get all he could out of the play, picked up a yard, it'll bring up second down and nine. In talking to Steve Waltz last night, I was so impressed with his poise. He's very cerebral. Talked like a coach, didn't he? Yeah, well, you know, we were talking to Andy Heck, the left uh, tackle, and he was saying, hey, he sure doesn't act like a backup quarterback. He acts like he, he should be playing. There's Mike Shula, and we'll be seeing a lot of the Shulas next yeah. Sunday. 
And we're going to end this first quarter of play as we'll be coming back with a second down nine for Chicago. The Jets leading it seven to nothing. It was the fake punt. It was fourth and one. Here's Christian lined up as the up back. He's going to take the direct snap. But you see the little seam right there? That's where he's going to run. And that kept his drive alive. A good heads-up play, and if the Bears can knock it into the end zone here, that was the play that really set it up. This is the 11th play of the drive as we start the second quarter of play. The line of scrimmage, the 21-yard line. Bears have not had a lot of drives, as you can see. Being flushed out, he just got rid of it. Real pressure coming from Alfred Oglesby, the guy who replaced Marvin Washington. The update on Marvin Washington, by the way, is that twisted knee. They took him in for further x-rays and looking at that knee. We don't know if he'll return. Y Gary, I know the Bears like to throw the ball quickly, but not only do they like it, they're going to have to throw it quickly tonight. I mean, Oglesby that time, we've seen Lagerman a couple of other times. The jet pass rush this first half has been pretty doggone good. Even on the, you know, the screen plays and on the five and seven step drops, they have been in Steve Walsh's face. Two sacks tonight. They had five in the previous three games. Complete to Conway, and Conway has a first down just short of the 10-yard line. Ronnie Lott hits Curtis Conway. You know, Conway played very, very well a couple of weeks ago. Then last week, really did not play well. Had only two catches in the ball game and then fumbled a kickoff. Yeah, but they say about Conway, if he comes off the line of scrimmage with, with some explosion, he can really be a threat. I mean, it's one thing having speed. It's another using speed. That time, he exploded off the line of scrimmage and made a tough catch. First down, Hodge in motion. They call him Lightning Tillman. He came out of Jackson State. Broke all of Walter Payton's rushing records there. He could have stayed with the New York Giants. Stayed for more money. Instead, elected to come to Chicago and be a starting running back. So everybody wonders what it's like to be Ronnie Lott from time to time. Number 42, right in front of you. And then continues to play a safety position, kind of like as a linebacker. They can pick up a first and goal about the six-inch line. Second down now for the five. Tillman again. Tillman fighting for the goal line, and he's going to be short by a yard and a half. You know, Gary, if the Bears can keep this game close, which they have not been able to do the last two weeks, and they can feed the ball to Lewis Tillman, you know, 18, 20, 22 times. I mean, they have a chance. Lewis Tillman is the kind of guy you feed him, and he gets better and better and better. Onstead hopes to go seven of seven inside the 20 the red zone third and goal And we're gonna have a timeout called The official stopping play right now Timeout Timeout Jets. They have two remaining in this first half. We'll be back. New York protecting a 7-0 lead. Other son coaching matchup in pro sports history. Don Shula, the all-time winningest coach in the NFL against David Shula. David Shula, the youngest coach still in the NFL at 35, but maybe aging quickly. Go he goes into that game 0-4, but we'll have the Shulas, father and son, going against each other next Sunday, beginning at 7.30 with the stadium show. You know, the Bears have two choices here. Third and goal, you can run Tillman twice or play action here. 15th play of the drive. Here's Tillman driving, diving. He's in. Touchdown, Chicago. The ball came loose, but he broke the plane of the goal. Yeah. So that play is blown dead, and Tillman went airborne and got it in. And that's a big drive for a team struggling for its conference. Again, set up by a special teams play. And Lewis Tillman stretching as far as he could, broke the plane of the goal line. I mean, they, I, I, don't, I think if they had not gotten on this run, they would have run again and made that decision. But he gets high, he gets over, and that's the kind of effort you need when you're one and two and you're struggling, Gary. That's, that's a heck of a play by Tillman. And you don't think Dave Wanstead isn't happy about it. Kevin Butler, point after attempt to tie it up when we're even at seven. 
So the Bears used a fake punt. They had to grind it out. They got it done. 58 yards in 7 minutes and 51 seconds. The most secret place in America. It up at 7 with 13.05 to go in this first half. The same. It took 15 plays to get it down, but what a confidence builder for both he and Steve Waltz. This Bears team needed some success, and they've had some. And they converted two third downs and one fourth down. Kevin Butler will be kicking off. Morrell is back deep along with Richie Anderson for the Jets. Only the second appearance in the middle lands for the Chicago Bears. Last one was in 1985. Morrell coming up. And Morrell fights his way to the 30-yard line. So Boomer Esiason will set it up there. You know, we haven't seen much of uh, Boomer Esiason tonight is, is the play action. I mean, that is really his trademark. And, you know, it sets it up when they run the ball. It really sets up his play action. Then when they get that play action go, I think Johnny Mitchell, their tight end, becomes a the defense. You don't necessarily have to dominate the blocks. You just got to push them out of the way. Well, those guys on the right side are huge. Dwayne White and Mala Mala. They list them at 315, but... Uh, Art Monk was a guy cleared momentarily. They could not get on the same page. Jeremy Lincoln defending on the play. To go back to that offensive line, we were talking to Dwayne White yesterday, and I kept asking him. We were on a speakerphone. <laughs> how heavy are you? And he acted like he was having technical problems. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's uh, well, he's somewhere over 300 pounds. They call him the Road Grader, and for uh, for good reason. He really does fill out that jersey. I know some Road Graders that aren't that big. Yeah, he's larger than several small states. <laughs> Second and ten. Thornton goes in motion. The late handoff to Johnson, and he's going to be tackled. Good reaction that time by Vincent Smith. Smith, who's been out with a knee problem the last two games, over there to make the stop. This guy's been around the system a long time, coming over from the Dallas Cowboys. Again, we, we talked about making plays. Again, they don't all have to be big plays. This is just one of them. Because this stuff, this stop here by Vincent Smith puts the Jets in third and nine. I mean, you can win some of those battles. But if you're third and one, third and two, like they were the last two weeks, you can lose. Three wideouts. Stevie Anderson's checked in. The blitz is coming. They pick it up, and then help comes from other areas. The ball up and thrown away. The blitz was picked up in the middle, and then from the corner, pressure in the face of Esiason. He throws it away, and it brings up a fourth down. See, I think it was Johnny Johnson who really saved Boomer Esiason early. And Johnson saw the blitz. He blocks the linebacker, Joe Kane. Boomer's allowed. I mean, that, that's a heads-up play. Now, it doesn't look like much. They still have to punt. But they saved themselves maybe 12, 15 yards. That was Fontenot putting the pressure on. Brian hands to the punt. Tom Waddle is back for Chicago. Pretty punt. Waddle tackled instantaneously. Very good reaction that time by the Jets. Marcus Turner. 44-yard punt. Three-yard return. We're tied at seven. Plans. Nick Lowry is such a consummate pro, the field goal kicker for now the New York Jets, 14 years of the Kansas City Chiefs, and that brings us to the GMC truck leaderboard. Nick Lowry has kicked 333 field goals in his career, only two behind George Blanda. Blanda, of course, able to score otherwise. And this throwback day, he didn't have any field goals today, George Blanda. But look at all the Jets up there, the all-time scoring leaders. Blanda didn't play today? Didn't play today. He wanted to. That's a scoop. He could have. <laughs> On the 15-yard line, the Bears will start. Tillman. And Tillman doesn't find a lot of running room that time. Very good reaction that time by the Jets. Bring right. up a second down, virtually nine yards to go. Gary, I see uh, Tony Casillas, number 92, is in for the Jets right now. And this is a guy we were hey, talking to Ronnie Lott last week and, uh, this week, and he said, you know, Casillas is really going to help this run defense. Didn't there. They want to get maybe 10, 15 plays out of him tonight, but next week he'll probably start. 
hard to get in football shape when you're not in camp. And here is a pass complete to Hodge. Hodge is tackled by Hasty. James Hasty runs him out of bounds just short of the 25. Well, they needed help in that interior of the defensive line after giving up 155 yards rushing last week. And Casillas, if there's one thing they say about him, Pat, is he plays with unbelievable enthusiasm and intensity. He will come after you, and he's best against the run. You know, it was, it was interesting. I think Dave Wanstead said to us, hey, we didn't come after Casillas because we drafted a lot of young defensive linemen. I know him well. We could use him stopping the run. But he said, I'm staying with my young guys I drafted. Third down and a yard. Tillman, he got it. Wasn't easy as he crosses the 25-yard line. Donald Evans made the stop. There were some talk that maybe Tillman had not lived up to the billing. He just didn't have a lot of opportunities to carry the ball, but he is tonight. You know, good play by the Bears. Casillas has not played this year up until just a couple of plays ago. So what are you in your first short yardage situation? You double team, run right over there, and pick up the first down. That's a, it's a heads up play by Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator of the Bears. Attack him. First down from the 25. Tillman again. Tillman keeps fighting his way forward across the 30 to the 31-yard line. He is a north-south runner. There's no flash in his game. He just comes running right at you. He's carried the ball now 11 times for 27 yards. Yeah, and when he gets into that, you know, 18, 19, 20, that's when he starts getting productive. And you, you said you're right. He is a north-south guy. He's not flashy, but he's a steady guy that's going to be productive. Second and four. change of direction by Tillman. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Bobby Houston, 55, made the stop. So Chicago doing a good job, Pat, of keeping the football moving, and that's what they want to do, establish some ball control. Yeah, and keep their defense really off the field. Happen, yeah. I mean, the defense has played pretty well. There's Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, brother of Norv Turner, head coach of Washington. Now, third down, a long yard. The Bears have picked up third down, both running the ball and pass the ball tonight. Could be a deep play to Conway. Four seconds on the play clock as Waltz takes the snap and Hodge can't hang on. Brian Washington was draped around him. Yeah, Walsh is hot because that ball probably should have been caught for the first down. I thought he was going to check and go deep to Curtis Conway because he had one-on-one -on -one, uh, coverage up top for a big play. And the ball was delivered right on the money. You know, Hodge had a drop last week yeah, he did. that uh, forced a punt. He was quite a receiver for the Steelers. Had 50 catches one year. Dardaki to punt. They're going to stop this one. The flags flying everywhere. Both starts. Right of the snap. Number 59. Five yards. Later tonight, Pat, we're going to probably see Raymond Harris playing some of that fullback spot. He's more of a runner than Hodge is. Hodge, they get him in there for his pass-catching ability. Harris also a very good pass blocker. So that's the first penalty of the night against Chicago. These two teams have not committed a lot of penalties coming into this ballgame. They've done very well in that department. The Jets are the least penalized. The Bears fifth in the division. Each have committed one here tonight. Gardaki. Clifford Hicks. And Hicks held it hard at the 32-yard line. 45-yard punt, 5-yard return. 7-7, seven, seven, 8 minutes to go in the first half. At the eight-minute mark of the second quarter. Next Sunday, we will be in Cincinnati, and Dan Marino, who today had a 400-yard game in a shootout with the Minnesota Vikings, will bring a team that would like to host the Super Bowl January 29th. The Dolphins losing a tough one today as Marino will take Don Shula's team into Cincinnati to meet David Shula. Well, Marino was tough on his receivers today, wasn't he? I mean, he was in their face all day. But he did have a remarkable performance. From the 32-yard line now, as we come back, first down. Johnny Johnson, the single running back. James 
Thornton goes in motion. Asias is looking off one side, comes back to Thornton, and he is belted. Now, Thornton is really belted. I mean, and a little uh, expletive there from Vincent Smith to let him know if he didn't know who he was. It was 55. You know, Gary, I'm really surprised with the New York Jets, and they're not running the football more tonight. They have only rushed the ball six times. Now, again, remember, this Bear defense ranks last, 28th in the NFL in rushing de defense, and that is the 12th pass now by the Jets. Especially when you've got a team that's been giving up 146 yards a game. Sinison now has missed his last three attempts. This time he'll make a connection to Art Monk, and Monk makes a catch for the 168th straight game as he's closing in on Steve Largent, who now has nine more and Art Monk just continues to marvel everyone. He just keeps going. You know, the amazing thing is he can play for 15 years in the league, Gary, because he never was a speed receiver. I mean, even 15 years ago he was. He's always been a possession guy, kind of guy. He remains that type of receiver. And so, you know, you don't have to worry about him playing all these years. The other thing is I think they're going to try to use Art Monk a little bit more in motion. I think when at Washington, when he was in motion, he was the most dangerous. 898 catches in his career. That's an NFL record. Decisive. And there's another one of those drops. And this one is Anthony Johnson, the guy who played for the Indianapolis Colts. They've had some drop passes, and both Esiason and Walsh not too happy about that development. Well, again, I'm, I'm just surprised we're not seeing the Jets run the ball more against a, a defense that was really shaky with its confidence in stopping the run. Last in the lead. Hanson to punt the football. 7.09 left in this first half. Waddle back for Chicago. Hanson, wobbly but very high. Waddle's going to run it out. To the 30 and tackle there. Tom Waddle just endears himself to the Chicago Bear fans. They love him. Cut four times by the Bears and such an important part of the Chicago team. 38-yard punt, six-yard return. Here's tonight's Pennzoil scoreboard as we check the activity in this fourth week of the 75th anniversary season. Well, you know, Gary, the... Uh Chicago Bear defense has played pretty well tonight. You know, they came in playing defense like divinity students, but they have they have done a they've done a very good job, I think, of putting some pressure on Esiason and, and really come up and reacting on the pass plays. Well, they could change their nickname to the Monks. <laughs> From the 30-yard line now, first down. Where do you come up with this stuff? Yes. To Tillman and he goes airborne for five yards to the 35-yard line. Tillman has been their workhorse tonight, and uh, it'll bring up a second down and five. You know, the, the best thing the Bears have done has been able to keep this game close. You know, we talked about the last two weeks they got blown out. Even though it was only 10 to nothing last week against Minnesota, they got blown out in the third quarter. So this is this has been a good first half for Dave Wanstead. You know, he's got some guys on defense making some plays, and the offense is controlling the ball a little bit. Creeping up on that play, Tillman is going to be tackled by Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones had a legendary cottage career at Florida State. And last year had the hip fracture. He was in bed for three months, didn't start working out until May, and they just see flashes of brilliance from this guy. Now, Marvin Jones, we talked about, Gary, you're right. He, he, is, he does have flashes of brilliance. He is number 54 for the Jets in white. Again, a patient play. Young linebackers oftentimes overrun plays. A disciplined play there by Marvin Jones forces a third and long. Third and eight. Watch the time. Delivers. And did they get the first down? Trying to stay in yeah. bounds was yeah. Hodge, and I think he did. He got the first down. Yeah. That'll stop the clock with 534. Bobby Houston over there. Eventually running him out. That's a 10-yard pickup on the play. Good little Fred Astaire move here by Merrill Hodge. Remember the last third down play, he, he kind of dropped. This time, he catches it. Now, he turned his head, and he sees the marker. He knows exactly where he has to go. Stays in bounds, makes the play, and once again, another first down. The Fred Astaire football from the 42-yard line, first down. Play action. 
action. Waltz in trouble. Gets rid of it. Completes it to Tillman. That was a nice ad-lib effort by Waltz. The presence of mind to step up, deliver the ball, and the first... Well, it's not going to be a first down. It's going to be short of it by a couple of yards. Is he going to mark the ball at the 49? It'll bring up second and two. So Gary, it was Jeff Lagerman again in Steve Walsh's face. I mean, Lagerman this first half has two sacks, and the other times he hasn't sacked Steve Walsh, he's been around him. Walsh is now 9 of 12 for 87 yards. Tillman, oh my! He is straightened up, and that is Ronnie Lott. You know, we saw him do that in tape this week, where he'll creep up, line up on the line of scrimmage, and you see how devastating it can be. You know, you can hear a Ronnie Lott hit. I mean, a running back doesn't have to look up and see that it's number 42. You know when you get hit by Ronnie Lott, because he brings everything he has. He's number 42, timed it perfectly. Not only is this a good hit, it was perfectly timed blitz by Ronnie Lott. And it's perfectly timed because he studied a lot and got the snap count down. He is still smoking people third and four Walsh in trouble knows it trying to get out of there there's a penalty flag as he is tackled back at the 45 Mo Lewis was there first but a flag was thrown to the line of scrimmage you, you, you got to know where Ronnie Lott is and pick him up on the blitz. That time, he did get picked up. I don't think this was even a Both play. Start. Yeah. Fire the snap, number 81, five yards. I have a hard time Still convincing Steve Walsh of that after the shot he just took. Yeah. Now watch Lott this time get picked up, number 42. I think it's Lewenberg, number 58, kind of bounces off his guy. The back, Tillman, steps in there. I mean, uh, Steve Walsh got beaten up pretty good, but at least they, they got a hat or helmet on Ronnie Lott. Now, the Bears on these, now it's, what, third and uh, about seven, I guess. I mean, they've had some success, Gary, throwing the ball out in the flat. Once to Merrill Hodge when he caught it, ran for the first time. This time he dropped it, he would have had for a first down. It's going to be third and nine, to be exact. Three wideouts. Again, having to dance around, look out from behind, got rid of it, complete to Waddle, and Waddle makes the catch. That ball took a long time getting there. It was wobbling, yeah. but Waltz knew that he was in trouble. He had somebody coming after him, and that ends up being a 22-yard completion. Yeah, that's the old option pass, you know, catch it at either end. That was the helicopter, but Lagerman put some pressure on him. He gets double teamed, but Steve Walsh, I, I tell you, he's been beaten up here in this first half, but he hangs in there, hangs in there, never looking at the rush, always looking down field here comes the helicopter and you know wouldn't you know Tom Waddles a guy anytime you're in trouble if you look for number 87 generally you're gonna make a play and he did right there I mean, you always know that Tom Waddle where he's gonna be he's gonna be past the, the markers on those critical third downs you throw it his way he's gonna catch it guy down is Jeff Lagerman the guy who we have been talking about all night long earlier Marvin Washington was taken out let's go back and see if we can figure out what happened to Jeff Well, we've, seen, we, we've seen more uh, more violent collisions in football, but he did get run in by one of his teammates. Well, you know, in 92, this guy really blew out a knee, had to have it reconstructed, has fought his way back, and uh, they just feel that uh, this could be his finest year, and hopefully this is not a serious injury. Yeah, yeah you look what he's done tonight. I mean, he got an awful lot of penetration. So the first down on the 22-yard completion will set it up at the 36-yard line for the Bears. You know, the thing about Steve Waltz, he's not pretty, but he just <laughs> seems to get it done, doesn't he? He thinks highly of you, Gary. <laughs> no, you're right. But, but you know, you, you call him a winner, that gets to be cliche for a guy who doesn't have a very strong arm. And he doesn't have a strong arm. But, you know, here's a guy who won at Miami, won a national championship at Miami, was drafted one. He had his moments in Dallas when he's played, uh, played there a lot. And that's a good sight, seeing Logan yes, come off. And, you know, he started in New Orleans from time to time, was productive. So you, you know what you have in Steve Walsh, a guy that's going to come out and not act scared when he plays. And he was a very confident quarterback yesterday. You know, you used to hear this a lot with the Dallas Cowboys. All the Miami, Florida guys had that confidence. Mm -hmm. He's got that. Some of that, to, to, when you win a national championship, yeah. I guess you should be confident. Well, like I said, Andy Heck saying, hey, he sure doesn't act like a 
like a backup quarterback. He's been a starting quarterback. He wants to be a starting quarterback. On this drive, Walsh is three of three. Goes in motion, play action fake. Waltz has got time. Waltz is going deep. The ball into the end zone, broken up. Boy, that was an opportunity. It was to Jeff Graham. Jeff Graham, the intended receiver. And very, very close to bring up second down and 10. We've seen so many of these plays this year in the NFL. I saw it today. Chris Carter of the Vikings, a couple of jump balls for touchdowns. Testing the rookie, the number one draft pick, Aaron Glenn. You know, they, Aaron Glenn has been tested every week, and he's met the challenge every week. Second down, 10. From the 35-yard line, here is Tillman again. Tillman dances inside the 30. And Tillman, you can see, running with more confidence seemingly every time he gets the ball. Mo Lewis, who's played so well for this Jets team, and Ronnie Lott on the stop. 16 carries now for Lewis Tillman. Now, the thing about being a number one draft pick as a corner is Aaron Glenn, number 31, is for the Jets. You know you're going to get tested every week. And he's been tested by Kelly, by Elway, by Marino so far this year. That time by Walsh, and he hasn't been beaten deep yet. Bears are 6 or 7 on third down. Third down and 4. Tillman, and diving forward, he's not going to get it. It'll bring up a fourth down. That was Marvin Jones again who cut him down. Well, the only other game that was not completed on the Sunday has now been completed, and the Seahawks now three and one. They are one of the surprise teams in the early going. 30 to 13 over the Steelers. Well, I am surprised that Dave Wanstead is considering going for it here. Again, his team battling for confidence. I mean, I'd, I'd kick the field goal here. Take a lead. Well, we'll come back. We'll figure this out as we've come to the two-minute warning. Tied at seven. Seven, the two-minute warning, and we'll be going to our Fruit of the Loom halftime report. You think LT's comfortable here all these years? Yeah, he's he at home here. for the Giants. He will be with Kevin Kiley and Bob Neal, and also Ernie Johnson. We'll be in Atlanta Studios with scores and highlights and a very interesting day in the NFL. Okay, fourth and two here for the Bears. You got a couple different scenarios. Run Tillman, use the count to draw him off sides, or the play action pass. trying to dry him off with his own stutter step. And okay. now they're going to yeah. blow the play dead. Did you see Hodge with his little stutter step when he was in motion as a move back, tried to draw him off. Yeah, and so and so the, that was their strategy, try to use the count. But the big thing is they didn't take the penalty. They yep. used a timeout so Kevin Butler wouldn't have to kick it for five, uh, five yards farther. There's no foul in the play. No foul. Timeout. Yes. I like that. I mean, no, it's the Bears. Strategy. He said Jets, yeah, but Bears. the Bears called the timeout. They have two remaining. Both teams have two each. Okay, Ronnie Lott, in his 14th year, we were talking to him yesterday, he says, hey, I'm still excited about playing. And he is still playing, and he's playing well. I mean, he... he okay, I kind of like those two-point plays, you know, where you get that little swinging gate where you... Get people yeah. lined up and flip it over to him, and Juan said, saying, what do you mean they didn't mark him? Well, every special teams player for the Jets at halftime, I'll tell you, they're going to be ready in the second half for anything. Well, now, <laughs> Butler, I think, is going to kick a field goal. I'm not going to be <laughs> presumptuous right now after what just happened a moment ago, but we started to say he's attempted only one. He didn't even score last week. As an end result, he had a streak of 66 games ended, scoring at least one point. I want to correct myself, that was actually Robert Green who was carrying that ball, these throwback uniforms. Not Sean Gale. This is going to be a 44-yard attempt yeah. if we ever get this thing sorted out. And once it, once it explained to him why, as you see Danny Abramowitz, the special teams coach for the Bears, trying to sell his point. They had a great idea, they yeah. just didn't quite uh, do it legally. But again, I think I like, the, like call, the Bears. Yeah, yeah, I like they're, the call. They're on the cutting edge here tonight, aren't they? They're just trying somehow yeah, yeah. to make something happen. Make make some plays. <laughs> make some plays. You know, they have made some plays. They made some plays defensively tonight. They've got some things going in the offensive game. You know, Steve Walsh played pretty well. Now they have a chance to take a lead. 44-yard attempt now for the lead. Out of the guard, Dockey hold. 
kick on the way by Butler, and Butler's kick has a distance, and it is good, and he has his first field goal of the season. Good hold there, Gary, by Gardaki. And that was a low snap that Chris Gardaki handled, got it up, set it up perfectly, and served it to Kevin Butler so he could get it through. Only his second year as a holder. He's going to get it. It's going to be a low ball. You'll see it. He sets it up, gets the laces away, tilts it to himself a little bit. I mean, that's a tough job. It's a thankless job. And a great job there by Chris Gardaki. Well, we talked to both of them last night, and Gardaki feels that his background as a place kicker at Clemson really helps him in the holding department, the little subtleties that creep in. Well, you know, you talk to the kickers around the league, and they say, you know, 90% of kicking field goals, uh, you know, making making field goals is the hole, the snap in the hole. And that was a heck of a snap and a good hole there by Godaki. Well, our aerial coverage of tonight's game and the surrounding area here in East Rutherford being provided by the MetLife Blimp, Snoopy One. MetLife Blimp typically cruises a speed of 35 miles an hour, about as fast as you and I jog in the morning. How do you know that? And an altitude of 1,200 feet. How do you know how fast it goes and how high it is? I just have an unbelievable a research staff yep. uh -huh. that stays with us. <laughs> have you ever been up in one? Have I? No, I have not. I've I have never been. been invited. I have been, so don't get smart. Now. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I mean, I go okay. up in those blimps and get this thing researched, figure well, it all out. For a guy who just found out that ice cream cones are hollow, Gary, I mean, I'm really, just are they lay really? off me. Yeah. Okay, Butler ready to go. <laughs> He's given the Bears a 10-7 to 7 lead with 155 left in this first half. Well, you got to watch this Bears team. You don't know what they're going to do tonight. Kickoff is taken by Morrell. Adrian Morrell to the 30, to the 35, and tackled at the 42-yard line. Two timeouts remaining now for the Jets. That's a 37-yard kickoff return. Mark Carrier eventually made the tackle. You know, Pete Cur uh, Carroll was saying about Adrian Murrell, number 29, as he gives us a little burst. I mean, as a running back, and he does it here as a kick returner, too. And there's a low kick. The coverage was a big separation by the, between him catching the ball and where the bear coverage was, and that really gave him a head start. Jets haven't had the football much this quarter, only three minutes and 13 seconds. Chris Zorich after Siason, and he gets rid of it. You know, again, Gary, with plenty of time, Jets continue not to run the football. There's a minute and 44 remaining in this half. They have two timeouts. They're playing against the, the worst run defense, at least up to this point in the NFL. Playing and into the Bears' hands, too. They've had good time of possession. Yeah, you know, we said, yeah, uh, Danelle Wolford, number 21 on Rob Moore. I mean, this has been a good matchup so far tonight, and that that's tremendous coverage by Wolford. Sison's connected only on one of his last six passes. Up the middle, George. They let him come through to set up the screen. Johnny Johnson makes the catch. He's got a first down to the 45-yard line. Boy, they really sold that screen very well. They let him pour up the middle. Sean Gale eventually made the tackle. First down at the 45. A minute 28 left in the half. Yeah, and that's like a run. I mean, that's just as good as a run. Now to huddle ready to go. Both Johnson now. Johnny Johnson and Anthony Johnson in the backfield. Tyson to 10 with Johnny Johnson. He knew he was going to get popped. And look out. Might have a little totting there for a moment. Vincent Smith then gets up, but uh, he was standing over number 39. Uh, but remember we talked about making plays? I mean, again, this is just another one. Dave wants it, wants his defense playing aggressive. There's Trace Armstrong getting upfield. Good protection there. You see number uh, 97, Chris Zorch, kind of falling off of the screen, and then a good play by Vincent Smith. This defense has played much better tonight than they have the last two weeks, Gary. Much better. Second down 10, a minute 12 left in the hat. Now it's Johnny Johnson and Adrian Morrell with the backfield. Complete. The catch is made by Johnny Mitchell, the tight end. He picks up five. Clock continuing to run, and the Jets now are going to use another timeout. They have one left. It just seems a shame to me to not be able to use Boomer Esiason's unique play-action fakes. And they're not using them because they're not running the ball. I mean, that... I mean, he's the best you've ever seen at that. I'm talking about Boomer Esiason, but we haven't seen it tonight, Gary. And he's, I think they're missing an opportunity. Well, they've had 18 passes and six rushes to back up what you're talking about. 
After the stadium show tonight, we're going to have the program 75 seasons, the story of the National Football League. This is an encore showing, and I don't know if you've seen this or not. There's some terrific footage in there. How about the one Ray Nitschke when he shows up on What's My Line, walks on, and they don't even know who Ray Nitschke is. Can you imagine that in this day and time in the NFL? This TNT original following the stadium show, post-game show, and it's a special slice of what's happened in the 75 years in the NFL. Lowry hoping to get a field goal attempt. A minute four left now in the first half. The Jets have one timeout remaining. They have a third down and five from the Chicago 40-yard line. Need about, oh, four or five more yards to give them a legitimate shot at a field goal attempt. for Mitchell to clear. Good coverage that time. That was Joe Keane, number 59, who stayed on Mitchell all the way. There's just nothing on that play, and it brings up a fourth down. So Joe Keane, number 59, on the tight end. I mean, sometimes you're going to get locked up in man-for-man -man coverage on a tight end, and you have to make the play. Last two weeks, they haven't. Tonight, this defense has Keane on Mitchell. Now, that's good defense. He is their leading tackler. He had to start at middle linebacker last year. Now, yeah, fourth down and five. You yeah. think they're going to punt it? Well, Kane saved a field goal attempt. Uh, that was good defense. The way they've been faking everything anymore, you wonder. Here is his to Hanson. Hanson trying to keep it in the field of play. Waddle lets it hit, and it's going to be saved, possibly. I think it is. A great reaction by Anthony Johnson, 32, who tipped it back in, and they'll have the ball at the two-yard line. 38-yard pooch punt that time by Brian Hansen. Love the way you say pooch. Really do. You're very good at that. But a, a, a hustling play by Anthony Johnson. I mean, special teams have, have, have played a major role here tonight. It was a fake uh, punt by the Bears. And here's the play by number 32, Anthony Johnson. He took a wicked bounce. Look, he's just hustling, hustling. Keeps the ball in play. I mean, now the, now the Bears, th their strategy is completely different. I mean, you, now you're just hoping to run the clock out with 48 seconds. The Jets, with one timeout, will try to force a punt. Yeah, they'd like to go in right now with this 10-7 lead. Just not make a mistake here. To try to sneak it forward and... Call timeout. Jets need to use that last timeout and have not yet. Now they are going to and stop it with 39 seconds. Boy, Pete Carroll has really changed the atmosphere around the New York Jets. He's done so many unusual <laughs> things. One time, they, instead of having a film session, went out bowling. He goes three-on-three three with some of the players. Can't build a basketball court, I guess, right off their practice facility. Okay. Interesting matchup. Two former defensive coordinators tonight, now uh, head coaches. Replacing Bruce Coslett, who had been the head coach of the Jets for four years, and Pete was his defensive coordinator. Ramowitz and Wanstead. Wanstead really chewing that gum. And then coming up at halftime, the Fruit of Loom halftime. <laughs> Bob and LT and Kevin and in Atlanta, Ernie Johnson. Cool. You know, it's interesting to me, Pat, that a wide receiver would be a special teams coach. Sometimes you don't look at guys like Danny Abramowitz that that would be a role they would fill. Usually there's some guy that was always knocking people yeah, down. Yeah, you're right. Well, Mike Ditka hired him originally as a special teams coach. I don't think, I think he was out of coaching completely. Mike Ditka brought him in and Dave Wanstead's retained him, and they have been uh, they've been the difference in this ball game right now. Set up a touchdown with a fake field goal, and the, you know the Bears lead by three. And almost pulled off another fake as they'll go to a knee now, and the Jets cannot stop it, and that will bring us to the halfway point of this game. So the Chicago Bears, who needed to develop some confidence in their play, have a three-point lead at halftime, 10 to seven. Only their second appearance here in the Meadowlands. They played the last time here in 1985, and the Bears lead this series three games to one. All those appearances, of course, we mean against the Jets. So with a 10-7 halftime lead, the Fruit of Land halftime report coming up. Stay with us. We'll be back.